It starts with a spark. A spark that creates momentum. Momentum that allows us to reach new heights and better the lives of every person on Earth. Momentum that creates transformative experiences that fuel connections, creation, and play. Momentum that helps us break through existing architectures and transcend what's possible. Momentum that drives evolution in safety, mobility, and how we feel about how we travel. And how we think about intelligence. At Intel, we create the momentum that will reshape our future and create the spark that changes literally everything. Welcome to Intel's CES press conference. We hoped, obviously, to be together in person today with a, live in, with a live audience, but in the interest of health and safety and through the power of some technology, we're thrilled to be here with you virtually today from Las Vegas. You know, the, te the technology shown at CES every year always amazes me. And this year, more than ever, it makes me grateful for the technologists out there who are dedicated to advancing innovation. We're living in a world where the digitization of everything has become accelerated, transforming how we live, work, and play. This acceleration has been driven by what we call the four technology superpowers. Ubiquitous computing, cloud-to-edge infrastructure, pervasive connectivity, and AI. Each one of these technologies are powerful on their own, but together they reinforce and amplify each other. And at Intel, we're harnessing these technology superpowers to deliver world-changing technology. We're making ubiquitous computing a reality, helping people to interact with a constantly changing face of technology. We're creating infrastructure that spans cloud to the edge to help process the massive amounts of data while addressing the demands for lower latency and higher bandwidth. We're driving pervasive connectivity enabling technology to seamlessly communicate with everyone and everything. And we're bringing intelligence to it all with our advancements in AI. Today, I'm going to be joined by leaders from across Intel, including the Vice President of the Visual Compute Group, Lisa Pierce, and the CEO of Mobileye, Professor Amnon Shashua. Together, we'll highlight how we're unleashing these superpowers in three specific areas. First, the incredible advancements we're making with industry-leading PC experiences. Second, the momentum and progress in our graphics business. And finally, the new advancements in automated driving solutions coming from Mobileye. Our time together is gonna to be action-packed with announcements every few minutes, so let's just dive right in. And let's start with a technology that's closest to my heart, the PC. Now, the PC is one of the most essential tools of modern times and we're committed to advancing client innovation further to deliver purposeful computing experiences to unlock people's potential and bring that idea of ubiquitous computing to life. Just last quarter, we launched our 12th gen Intel Core desktop processors, headlined by the world's best gaming processor, the Intel Core i9-12900K. And the response has been just incredible. We're on pace to have our fastest enthusiast desktop ramp of all time. And it's no surprise. We created the 12th gen core family of processors with a superior performance to unlock the experiences that matter most to people, from gaming to creating, communication, collaboration, and more. 12th generation Intel Core represents our most, our most significant breakthrough in x86 architecture in more than a decade. Built on our Intel 7 process node, these processors are Intel's first performance hybrid design featuring two core architectures, performance cores and efficient cores. And with Intel Thread Director built in, we can ensure that the right workloads move to the right cores to deliver the best experience possible. And today, we're going to expand the 12th gen family further, starting with the announcement that we're in production of our brand new 12th gen Intel Core KS series processor. This processor takes performance to all new heights. It has a whopping 5.5 gigahertz single core turbo right out of the box. 
and with optimizations for performance cores, we can get above five gigahertz on multi-core performance. And I've got Chuck here with me today to show you that processor in action. Hey, Chuck. Hey, thanks, GB. Here I have the game Hitman 3, which has been optimized for our new performance hybrid architecture. Now, the high frequencies and the intelligent use of P and E cores seamlessly working together result in unrivaled gameplay. So you can see the game here. And GB said you were going to get those P cores at above 5 gigahertz, but you'll see those are hitting 5.2 gigahertz across all cores right out of the box. Wow, that's incredible, Chuck. And we'll ship this new enthusiast desktop part to OEM customers by the end of this quarter. The platform technology we've showcased today isn't limited to just our desktop lineup. I'm thrilled to announce that starting today, we're bringing our new hybrid architecture to performance laptops with the launch of eight brand new 12th gen H-series mobile processors. With up to 14 cores and clock speeds up to five gigahertz, our 12th gen H-series delivers up to 40% higher performance than our prior generation. The result is the world's best mobile gaming platform, period. And we've tested it against everyone. And I've invited Chuck back up to show it to you in action. The new 8-series processors deliver incredible real-world gaming play experiences. And we're not just talking one or two games. You can see here, we are running the popular game Hitman 3 against the best compass offer in the market today. When we tested it in our lab, we saw that our systems got 49% higher frame rates. And we have Rift Breaker at 27% higher FPS. Mountain Blade 2, Bannerlord at 23%, and Total War Three Kingdoms at 47%. As you can see, across the board, we beat the competition on those top games available today. Oh, thanks, Chuck. I love seeing the breadth of performance leadership here, and we expect to maintain that leadership through 2022 and beyond. Now, the 12th generation Core H-Series isn't just good at one thing, though. We designed the processor family to conquer multiple high-intensity workloads at the same time, meaning that people can game, create, record without compromise. And no one knows this better than Toki, a content creator and Twitch streamer who's been putting our core H-series processor through the paces. And we're not just joined by Toki here on stage with me today. We're also joined by all of her fans around the world because she's right in the middle of a match. So thank you very much for being here with thank me today. You. Yes, JB. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, so one, I know you've been putting the processor through the paces. So tell us about your experience so far. Absolutely. So I understand that I'm one of the few who has had the opportunity to test out the new 12th gen device. And I have to say, seriously, wow. Like, I, I genuinely didn't know what I was missing until now. I mean, it's, it's no secret that I love gaming, yeah. <laughs> but to be totally honest with you, my, my real love, my real passion is streaming itself and connecting with my community. And by the way, look at how many of them are yeah, here. Yeah, I can see today. you're blowing up over here on the yeah. screen. That's great. I've been doing this for, for some time. I've been streaming professionally for about three years now. And to be honest with you, in the past, there was always some element to my stream that was compromised, whether that was some frame rate issues or just a laggy stream in general, which no one likes. And I have to say that with the new 12th gen device, all of those issues and worries are a concern of the past. I'm so excited for it. No, I love it. I love gaming, streaming, all without compromise. Yes. It's a huge theme for us. Yes. So thank you and thanks to all your fans around thank the world you, for joining you. us here live at CS. Yes, air high yeah. fives. High five virtually in the air. <laughs> okay, great. Well, hey, we've shown that the 12th generation 8 series processors are great for gamers and streamers. So now let's also show the experiences they unlock for creators. Whether you're a hobbyist, a studio animator, or doing other creation kind of tasks, we built the 12th generation core for you. And with our performance and efficient cores, you can execute performance heavy tasks like encoding or rendering while working on background tasks like file transfers, web browsing, and more, all at the same time without compromise. But to truly appreciate it, you've got to see this in action. So in our ongoing work with our creator community, we know that the virtual production in real-time 3D engines is one of the hottest trends in this growing industry. It reduces the lag time between creation and finalization without sacrificing quality. And I'm thrilled to share that we have Rich Hurry, an expert in the field of animation and visual effects, 
and the co-founder and president of KiteString to show you this process in real time. So welcome, Rich. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, GB, and I'm super honored to be here today. Um, it's funny, seeing all this innovation, it, it really is, for me personally, a driving force for my creative journey as a character technical artist. And really, to that fact, all the advancements we're seeing in the industry now was the inspiration for my team to create Ozone in the first place, which is our technology for creating high quality characters for film, TV, and games. Um, Ozone Rig Studio allows for a rig once anim animate anywhere approach to production, allowing artists to work in Maya, Moto, Unreal, Unity, and really any application over time. Um, so anyway. No, that's great. I know you brought us some things to show us in action. So I do, yeah, I do, do I do. So this scene I was working on um, last week on the road, and honestly, I had to say, this laptop with these new processors, I'm getting workstation level performance on the go. That's great. It's, it's awesome. Great. So anyway, let's, let's take a look at this scene here, and I'm gonna show um, the process of taking animation from one environment to another um, really quickly. So let's do this. I'm gonna hit play on this, and it's pretty easy. So what we do is we'll just export an ozone clip here out of Maya, and then we'll take that, and then we'll bring it into Unreal. If I hit play, we'll see that we've got the same animation here running in the real-time environment. Now, if I wanted to make a change now, in the past, I'd have to go back into my animation environment, and I'd have to make a change, I'd have to re-export and bring it in. It would really take me totally out of my flow. But with Ozone Rig Studio, I can come in here and I can make changes live. So we're gonna select the mushroom puppy here. We'll take that there. We call it- uh, I like mushroom puppy. Cre cre creepy cute, and I type in cute instead of jaw, so we'll, uh, we'll do that. Um, but you can see that now I can, I can literally oh, wow. change this on the fly, in context. I don't have to kind of jump out of my flow. Um, and if I go here, we'll do it on our other character, Zoe, and I can do the same thing with her. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up her jaw, we're gonna look at her brow controls, um, and I'm gonna add a little bit of concern. So I can do this and I can just bring up her brows. Or a little ADDs. more. Oh, yep. yeah. Right, and it really, it really shows some concern. But again, I didn't have to come out of my flow. I get to work in context, and on this laptop, I can work in real time. No, I love it. I love that we're able to keep you in the flow with that performance, oh, and you don't have awesome. to jump out and then come back and it, it is seems a like a real game changer. It is a fantastic way to work. And Ozone Rig Studio is designed to enable feature film quality characters, whether you're in games, virtual production, or in a traditional animation pipeline. Wow. It really allows artists to work in context, in real time, and honestly, just like your new family of processors, all without compromise. That's fantastic. Well, hey, Rich, thank you very thank much you, for showing man. this live. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's very, very exciting. So, from gaming to creating, our 12th generation core A-series processors deliver superior laptop performance. And as part of one of the most open and robust ecosystems in the industry, we're proud to be working with our partners to deliver choice in design and experience. Now today, I'm pleased to introduce more than 20 new designs powered by the H-Series processors. From partners including Dell, Gigabyte, HP, Lenovo, MSI, Razer, Republic of Gamers, and more. I love it. And this is just the beginning. In total, we'll deliver more than 100 new designs this year. And Chuck, I believe you've got one of Acer's newest designs with you here today. That's right, GB. This is the new Predator Triton 500 SE. This device features the perfect mix of technology and an incredibly sleek design to fuel your gaming from anywhere. This includes the 12th gen core, up to 32 gigs of DDR5 memory high-speed PCI Gen 4 storage, and Intel Wi-Fi 6E is built into every 12th gen platform so you can have confidence in an uncompromised on-the-go experience. We're not only bringing this architecture and performance to the enthusiast and gaming space, we're also bringing it to thinner and lighter laptops. And with that, I'm very excited to announce we're in production and shipping a new product line called the 12th gen Intel Core P-Series. This family includes six brand new processors delivering up to twice the performance above our 11th gen U-series systems in market today. So Chuck, let's show everyone what they can expect from the P-series. Happy to, GB. The new P-series devices are tailor-made for performance needed in a variety of thin and light laptops and cutting-edge designs like these from Acer, Dell, 
HP, and this system here from Lenovo. So the new ways we are working, collaborating, and creating can be done anywhere without, mess, without missing a beat. Wow, thanks, Chuck. Those are some great moves there. <laughs> and as you've heard today, our Intel execution is back, and we're moving at a more accelerated pace than ever. In total, we're delivering 28 new 12th generation Intel Core mobile processors across our HP and traditional U-series product lines that will result in more than 350 more mobile designs this year. And with our next generation processors, codenamed Raptor Lake, on track, already booting Windows, you can expect even more advancements from us in performance and choice coming later in 2022. Now the innovation we're driving with our CPUs is just part of the story. As you know, we've been on a mission to deliver the best PC experience with our Intel Evo platform. Since its launch, we've delivered more than 100 Evo verified designs from our leading OEM partners. We co-engineer and test each design against real world conditions to ensure these are the best experiences on the planet. To date, we've gone through two generations, and today I'm pleased to announce the third generation of our Intel Evo spec. In this spec, we're adding new technologies to the platform, including Intel Wi-Fi 6E, background dynamic noise reduction using the AI engine built right into the platform, and for people looking for additional performance, we're extending the spec to include select 12th gen H-series designs and an option that includes our new Intel Arc discrete graphics that you're gonna hear more about later. Now, Chuck, over to you to show how Dell leveraged all of this new technology into one of their upcoming Evo designs. So GB, with these new technologies added to the platform, we're able to engineer incredibly powerful devices like this brand new Dell Precision Mobile Workstation. This is a gorgeous ground up redesign that features our H series 45 watt processor and Arc Discrete graphics alongside a powerful platform that supports consistent responsiveness, all day battery life, and more. And really, you know, to have a 45 watt processor, a discrete card, and something that looks like a U chassis is incredible. Yeah, I love it. I love that design. It's absolutely stunning. And we're adding more choice so people can pick the right experience that meets their needs, all backed by the Intel Evo promise of delivering the best experiences on the planet. And you can expect us to continue advancing and evolving the spec. Now, one of the things that jumped out at us was this need for a better, more unified cross-device experience. According to a recent study, 70% of people access the internet across multiple devices and 90% of those people use multiple screens to accomplish a single task. At Intel, we want to unify that experience and make it easier. And with that, I'm pleased to announce that we've acquired Screenovate, a pioneer and leader in delivering technology for advanced interaction between multiple devices based on different, different operating environments. Now, by integrating and building on Screenovate's technology, we intend to enable new interactions with full flexibility across ecosystems, operating systems, and form factors. And most importantly, it'll be built on top of that Intel Evo promise I just talked about. So Chuck's gonna give us a glimpse of what this experience will look like. Hey GB, this new Intel technology will break through the communication barriers no matter what your devices are or no matter what OS you're running. So let me give you some examples. The first thing we have is we have my iPhone here, but you can see my iMessages and SMS texts are showing up on my Evo laptop. Not only can I see them, I can easily reply. Now, there's also the devices that are attached to our phone, such as our watches. So let's go ahead, make sure we can got everything in here. We'll go to our health, and you can see I've got my heart rate and my oxygen rate right there. I can also take a look at my recently captured ECG captures. So again, all my health data right here on my Evo laptop. Now, many people also love second displays when they travel. So let me show you how I can take my Android tablet and turn it into a second display. We're going to click on our tablet. We're going to hit extend screen. And you can see how my workflow is already moving across both screens. Now, let's take a look at those devices that everybody has in their house, like a smart TV. So I'm gonna go here and take a picture real quick. Go to my TV. Let's go take a camera. 
Oh, gee, there you are, GB. <laughs> Photobomb you a little bit there. Sorry, John. Let's go ahead and project that up to our TV. And you can see it's going to end up right on my TV so I can share it with everybody. See, you caught me by surprise, GB. Now, again, here's all our devices. We've got Chromebooks, Android phones, Android watches, smart TVs, Android tablets, iPhones and iWatches, all seamlessly connecting to our Evo platform. Wow, I love it, Chuck. Thank you so much. This is really going to be a game-changing experience. And I love to see the PC remains the center of it all, enabling all those devices to work seamlessly together. And I'm excited to announce that this experience will be available in exclusive number of Intel Evo platforms for holiday 2022. Now, the PC really is one of the most innovative and open platforms ever invented. And we're committed to advancing the experience to ensure it remains the human touch point in a world of ubiquitous computing. To do that, we'll deliver new technologies to the platform, just like I showed, and beyond. And with that, I'm thrilled to welcome Lisa Pierce to share the advancements we're making in our discrete graphics business. Hi, Lisa. Thanks, GB. To build on the momentum you just shared, I'm excited to announce that we are now shipping our Intel Arc discrete GPUs for 12th gen Core 8 series mobile designs to our leading OEM customers. With our long-standing partnerships with key OEMs, we've enabled rapid integration of Intel Arc into their next generation platforms. In fact, some of the designs are with us today. This is Alienware's X17 that will enable a premium laptop gaming experience powered by 12th Gen 8 Series, Intel Arc, and Alienware's Cryotech Cooling. It's also Alienware's thinnest 17-inch gaming laptop to date. Another example is Lenovo's Ultra Portable Yoga. This enables high-performance mobile content creation and enhanced gaming in a multi-form factor device. Together with our partners, we will launch more than 50 mobile and desktop designs, all using Arc. In fact, many of the eight series systems we showed already have Arc integrated. One of the advantages we can offer our customers and gamers is the enhanced experiences that come with combining Intel Arc GPUs and Intel Core platforms. Which brings me to DeepLink, a collection of technologies where our CPU and GPU architects have collaborated on the platform level to deliver better experiences with Intel Arc graphics and Intel Core platforms. Our first technology in the DeepLink portfolio is called Dynamic PowerShare, where the processor and graphics communicate to have an optimal set of performance levels depending on the workload. When graphics needs more power, it can shift the power from the processor and vice versa. We'll also introduce new gaming features that enable more user choice between performance and battery life and performance while streaming. But today, I want to focus on our next deep link technology, hyperencode. With the rise of social media, video editing has become a major workload for PCs. And it's very demanding on GPUs, which are responsible for both the decoding and encoding of media. Depending on your content, the video export process, where modified videos get encoded for external sharing, can be very time consuming. This diagram is showing the encode process today with hyperencode. Each sequence of frames is processed in order, one block after another on one device. Now with hyperencode, this is where we leverage all the technology in the platform and automatically divide the encoding work between the CPU's integrated graphics and the discrete Intel GPU. This speeds up the encoding by 1.4x. Now let's take a look at a demo. This is DaVinci Resolve, which is a popular video editing program from Blackmagic Design. We're showing the export process where an edited video is encoded for sharing. You select Render All to start the export. On the top of the screen, you can see the frames that are currently being encoded. In the middle, we're using our free public tool, the Intel Graphics Performance Analyzer, to show our activity on both our integrated and discrete GPUs. And at the bottom, you can see the progress bar blown up from the DaVinci Resolve UI. As you can see, a traditional system would only utilize one of the devices during the encode process. In contrast, on the right side, the system has hybrid encode active. Also notice how quickly the progress bar is moving on the hyper encode side. You can see both GPUs are active in encoding frames. By combining the power of our integrated and discrete GPUs, the Alchemist hyperencode system completes the encode 1.4x faster than a discrete GPU alone. 
Now, of course, for many discrete GPU users, it's all about gaming. And to deliver the best experiences on Arc, we partner with major game developers to optimize for Intel devices. As part of that work, I'm excited to announce an exclusive partnership with Kojima Productions and 505 Games. The director's cut of Death Stranding will be coming to PCs this spring. This is the definitive version of the game, with additional game modes, a new infiltration mission, and extra content. We've been working with Kojima on integration of many key Intel technologies. For example, the game will deliver optimal core utilization on 12th gen Intel Core processors and XCSS, our AI-based image upscaling technology for our GPUs. With the director's cut, gamers can explore a vast world of ultra settings and high performance enabled by XCSS. And we've seen rapid and eager adoption by the gaming ecosystem, with our initial titles, including Hitman 3 and The Rift Breaker, which will all benefit from the enhanced performance and improved visuals of XCSS. We've also been working with 10 leading studios on multiple engines and multiple titles. We're enabling a broad collection of XCSS games throughout 2022. Shipping Intel Arc to leading mobile OEMs and broad adoption of our new technologies like XCSS and HyperEncode marks an important milestone on our discrete graphics journey. So stay tuned, more excitement is ahead. Back to you, GB. Wow, thanks, Lisa. That's really exciting stuff. This is such a huge step forward on our XPU journey. We're delivering the computational horsepower our customers demand in whatever architecture or form best suits their application. And you can count on Intel to continue to partner closely with ISVs to ensure their games and applications run best on Intel. And now for the final announcements of the show, I'd like to take everyone on a journey from the client to the edge to show you how Intel and Mobileye are going to drive us into the future. To share more, I'm happy to introduce Amnon Shashwa. Thanks, uh, GB. It's truly a, a great time to work on autonomous uh, driving. Uh, 2020 not, 2021 was a really a meaningful and a record year uh, for us. Our revenue rose 40% uh, year on year to $1.4 billion. We had uh, 41 new design wins, which again is, is, is a record number uh, for us. Those design wins were responsible for 50 million new cars on the road going, uh, going forward. Uh, this year, we also launched 188 uh, new car models with our, uh, with our technology, with our chips. And we also had uh, four uh, industry uh, first uh, launches. One was with uh, Honda, the first uh, level three uh, system launched in Japan, where we were responsible for the computer vision. Uh, the first eight megapixel camera with a 120 degree uh, field of view launched this year uh, with the BMW. Uh, Volkswagen, we'll talk about this uh, later. Uh, Travel Assist 2.5 uh, with a cloud-based enhancement using our crowd, uh, crowd-sourced uh, REM uh, technology was launched uh, this year. And our uh, biggest you know, effort in, in driving assist is a supervision 11 cameras around the around the car powered by two iq5 chips was launched uh, a month ago uh, with the zika it's a brand of uh, Geely. few thousands of cars have been uh, have been shipped already and through a over-the-air update uh, more and more uh, advanced uh, features would be uh, would be delivered to uh, to customers now one of the reasons of our great success is, uh, is Ford. And to help us learn more about our long-standing and now expanding relationship, I'd like to welcome uh, Jim Farley, Ford uh, CEO. Jim, welcome to CS. I'm delighted you can join me on stage today, even though we are having to meet uh, virtually. And um, thank you. Uh, it's such a privilege to uh, represent all the team members at Ford. Uh, we've been working on safety technology for uh, like a century, so uh, we love working with Mobileye. Uh, your technology uh, is incredible. Your vision sensing technology is fundamental in all of our ADAS systems, especially your, your IQ sensing system. So congratulations on all your success. Thank you, Jim. It's truly a privilege to work with you guys. Our relationship goes back more than a decade together, bringing advanced technology to millions of cars globally. It's a relationship that we are, we are expanding. Can you give us some more color on what's, uh, on what's new? Well, when we first got into the ADAS systems and now into level two, 
you know, the mapping technology was something that was a concern and your uh, REM uh, mapping technology in our future versions of uh, Blue Cruise are really important for our hands-free driving solutions. There are a lot of applications where there's uh, not co concrete lanes and it's really a s safety critical for us to have lane centering in those situations. Your technology is second to none. Uh, great. We're very excited to deploy maps uh, across the Ford family. You know, uh, the maps add cloud-based enhancements that provide value to end users. So, Jim, how will uh, the Ford Mobileye future look like? Well, further out, I think Ford and Mobileye are working on, an, on a number of innovations. You know, this has been a long relationship and, and, and we trust each other. But what I'm most excited about as a CEO is working on your open platform on a whole new generation of autonomous technologies that are gonna really change customers' lives, moving from safety to doing all sorts of new things inside the vehicle. And it's thanks to your technology. That, that's right, our new IQ6 uh, High and uh, IQ Ultra, which I'll talk about uh, tomorrow during the under the hood uh, technical deep dive that I'll give tomorrow, gives Ford and the industry a platform for innovation that's directly tied into the IQ uh, functionality. Well, the, the progress is, is great. I, I love how the teams are working together. Amnon, it's, it's been great to work with you um, specifically and, and your team of technologists uh, are really so broad. I mean, we, we just couldn't offer the systems that we do at Ford without you and we're betting on Mobileye for our future. Thank you. Thank you, Jim, for, for joining us. It's, it's truly a privilege to work with you and, and your team. And a great uh, 2022 for all of us. Thank you. Now I'd like to turn to another one of Mobileye's longstanding uh, customers, uh, Volkswagen. Volkswagen rec recently debuted a state-of-the-art driver assistance system called Travel Assist 2.5. It is the first system to widely apply Mobileye's unique RAM crowdsourced uh, mapping uh, technology. Production vehicles equipped with Mobileye technology are gathering road segment data via driving uh, assist uh, systems. Uh, those are harvested, sent to the cloud. And then in the cloud, we have automatic uh, map creation uh, algorithms that we have been developing over the past uh, five years. Those maps are sent back to, uh, to vehicles. And on board the vehicle, there is a localization uh, process uh, being done where the car localizes itself in the map and, and all the map data is ki kind of a cloud-based assistance to, uh, to the driving uh, assist. Of course, it's powering our AV technology, but in the context of uh, uh, what we'll be seeing right now, it's a cloud-based enhancement for driving uh, assist. I was in Munich uh, two weeks ago and met with the Volkswagen Group Chairman of the board, uh, Dr. Herbert Dies, and we went for a drive to see, uh, to see how it works. I would like to uh, share with you some of our conversation. I'm really excited to be here because we need a good understanding to make the right decisions. You know, we have been working for so many years together and you know, I've been doing great things with, uh, with Volkswagen over, over, over the years. You know, when, when you talk about you know, autonomous driving and driving assist, there's lots of evolution for driving assist that will give lots of value to customers. It is really adding a very unique element, which is now cloud-based assistance. But here we're doing something together. Actually, we have been starting working on it back in 2017, I think. I think well, even in 16, we started the first discussion. Yeah, yeah. And, and now we see it really in, in, yeah. in production. Yeah. Lots and lots of you know, data about the, about the world is injected to the driving assist. So even if you drive in an area that you don't see lane marks, the cloud knows about it yeah. and you know, helps the, the, the lane centering. Yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> you can feel that it's RAM data because, you know, we're not in the middle of the lane, we're not to the right, we're just doing a natural pass now. And it's continuously on. Right? It's continuously so it's on. on. It's working really well. You see road boundaries, but there are two lanes here and you don't see a lane ah, mark. Yes. No, it's working well. So I think the next step of, of now using RAM is to go, is to start using traffic lights. So today, today, RAM is only the drivable path. Yeah. 
is using traffic light information. Then we have data about the uh, road priority, who has priority over what, and then it, it creates a very, very smooth control, you know, in areas where you have splits and merges, <laughs> so that you know who has priority. Do you think it will be possible at some stage that we even can update the AI part of the camera? I, th I think that the AI part has two parts. Right? There is one, let's call it the pattern recognition. Yes. Now the algorithms for knowing that there is a you know, road user, a you know, a horse, a cart, a, you know, a motorcyclist and so forth. And then there's the part that understands more and more complex uh, surroundings and sometimes it becomes difficult for the onboard processing to really understand in a fraction of a second what, what's going on there. Uh, and, and this is the second part of the AI, which you can do it with, through swarm uh, the cloud processing. But it remains cloud knowledge then? It's cloud knowledge. Okay. And in cloud, the, the, the beauty of the cloud is you have much more processing uh, power. For example, you know, in, in the ID4, we're talking about 2.5 kilometers of road in, in, in Europe. 2.5 million kilometers. kilometers. Yeah. Yeah. So we take all this swarm data, it takes us uh, a week, and there's no reason, you know, with, with the advancement of computing, that will not take us a day. And then later it will take us, you know, half a day. Yeah. So everything that happens yeah. in the world yeah. can then be updated and streamed to, uh, streamed to cars. Are you happy with how we can work together now? Yeah. But I would like to say in terms of our relationship, we have been doing things that are very, very innovative. For example, this swarm data, Mobileye and Volkswagen were the first. The first, we talked about 2016, it's very, very innovative. But I think there's lots more to, uh, lots more to do. I fully agree. Very good. Okay. So, so REM is truly a game changer. Uh, it's lean data, uh, automated map creation uh, in the cloud. Let me show you some of under the hood of what we just uh, seen uh, while uh, I was driving with, uh, with Herbert. Uh, you see here in this uh, clip, as we are uh, driving, we're going to take a right. And this uh, rural road, uh, there are no lane marks. Now, the two uh, magenta lines are uh, the strength, central drivable uh, paths. You see there is one oncoming and, and one uh, the path that we are driving through. So without the map data, it would not have been possible to, uh, to do lane centering in this kind of uh, road. Either the car would not be, either the technology would not be available or the car would center itself in the middle of the road, not being aware that there is also an oncoming, uh, an oncoming path. Another piece of uh, under the hood, while we're driving there, you see that there are traffic lights. Uh, the REM uh, map uh, technology can associate traffic lights with, uh, with drivable uh, uh, paths. This is a very important feature, not yet available at, uh, in, in the Travel Assist uh, 2.5, uh, where you can provide a very powerful customer uh, function to prevent cars from running a red light. Uh, it's not enough just to detect the red light, one needs to know the relevancy of each traffic light with a drivable uh, path, and this is also provided by, uh, by the map uh, data. You can see here just a top view of uh, one of the sections uh, in, that, uh, in that area, the richness of, uh, of the data, the accuracy uh, of the data. Uh, all, of that, all of this is really uh, a, a very, very strong amplification of what you can do both with driving assist and, and later with the autonomous uh, driving. If uh, we look at the, at the coverage, we have uh, 2.5 million kilometers of uh, road uh, covered in, uh, in, in Europe. Um, in terms of the amount of data collected in 2021, it's around uh, 4 billion kilometers of data being collected. Today, we have about 25 million kilometers of data every day, collected every day. So going forward to 2022, it's going to be around uh, 10, 10 billion kilometers of uh, data going forward for uh, 2022. You know, this kind of, uh, of data allows us to, uh, you know, efficiently expand our footprint in terms of autonomous vehicle uh, uh, testing into many different uh, territories, right? We're testing in Israel, we're testing in uh, Munich, Detroit, New York City, Tokyo, Paris. Uh, Tokyo, Paris is new. I'll, I'll show uh, a bit of uh, what we have. This is in, in Paris. 
Before I run the clip, this is a, a joint uh, cooperation with RATP uh, Group. It's a, public, a major public uh, transport uh, operator in, in France. Um, uh, Galerie Lafayette employees uh, can use the, the autonomous uh, test car with a safety driver, of course, uh, to uh, go from, uh, from the offices to, uh, to their home. And the application, the top layer application is powered by, uh, by Moveit, uh, which is a, a company that we acquired about, uh, about a year ago. So let me run this, uh, this clip. It's a bit uh, fast forwarded, uh, but you can see the, the richness of the, of the driving uh, situation. You know, after all, it's Paris. Paris is very, very difficult, uh, um, very difficult scene to, uh, to drive in, even for a human uh, driver. And you can see the kind of uh, testing uh, we can do, um, you know, the smoothness of, uh, of the drive. Here is another uh, testing site in, uh, in Tokyo. I'll run this uh, clip. Again, you know, the, the, the richness of uh, pedestrians, the roads are, are narrow, uh, obstacles, you know, pedestrian uh, crossing zones, and, and, and so forth. So uh, you can see that you know, our, our REM data provides us geographic uh, scalability to allow us to do uh, testing really, really worldwide in a very, very efficient uh, manner. Talking about uh, driving, uh, driving assist, if we take the, 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 the premium driving assist with map data to its fullest uh, extreme, you have what we call uh, supervision. The first launch is with the Zika, a brand of uh, Gili. It was launched about a month, a month and a half ago. Uh, there are a few thousands of vehicles already delivered to, uh, to customers. There are 11 surround cameras, uh, eight megapixels, powered by two IQ5, uh, two IQ5 chips. Um, the ECU, the entire board, is designed and, and, uh, and provided by, uh, by Mobileye. And the kind of driving that you saw in the previous two clips is what this car would be able to do with over-the-air update that uh, would be uh, delivered throughout uh, 2022. Just to show you an example, this is in, in Israel. We're testing the, uh, the vehicle with the kind of software that will be uh, delivered in, in few months uh, in China. And, and you can see the, the ch you know, traffic lights taking uh, turns. It's all you know, the, the same kind of performance that you saw in the previous two clips in Paris and in Tokyo. Uh, the Zico car will be able uh, to do. So a few thousands of vehicles have been shipped and over the air update during the next uh, few months would gradually bring the capabilities of this vehicle to the uh, you know, navigate on pilot, point-to-point, -point, hands free driving, but as a level two, as a level two uh, system. Uh, together with the Zika, we also announced uh, uh, just uh, uh, this week the first design win for a consumer level four uh, platform. It's going to be a uh, start of production early 2024. It's going to be powered by six IQ5 uh, chips an ECU that we also uh, designed and will be ready for 2024 uh, uh, launch. Going back to, uh, to our chips, you know, our IQ chips, you know, we have been uh, designing, manufacturing them for the past uh, 16 uh, years. Uh, we just announced uh, 100 million chips being uh, delivered uh, since uh, 20, 2004. Um, IQs are, are very, very efficient. It's a combination of hardware and software. It's purpose-built. It's a very, very low power consumption, very high performance uh, uh, computing, and there are 100 million cars on the road uh, powered by, uh, by, IQ, uh, by IQ chips. And I'm happy to announce we have uh, three new generations of, uh, of you know, next generation of, uh, of IQ. Uh, in the under the hood uh, uh, session, I will provide more details. It's IQ6 and IQ uh, Ultra. I'm showing here the, the, the crown jewel. IQ Ultra is an AV on chip. It is roughly equivalent to 10 IQ5s. It's on a five nanometer uh, process. There are four families of uh, accelerators that uh, Mobileye has designed over, over many, many years. There are 64 accelerator cores in this, uh, in this chip, divided into two, uh, in, into two parts of uh, 32, such that we can provide with an external MCU an ACLD uh, system. There is a GPU and ISP for, uh, for visualization. Power consumption is very, very light, is way below 100 uh, watts. 
it's 176 uh, uh, tops. And it's important to, to mention that tops is not, it's not everything is about tops. The fact that we have a very, very diverse set of uh, cores allows us to be very, very efficient. Take, for example, the two, uh, the clips that I've shown you with, uh, with our two IQ5 uh, system, two IQ5 is only 30 tops. And we can do an end-to-end -end, you know, perception, driving policy, and, uh, and control. IQ Ultra will have also 12 uh, RISC-V uh, cores. Each is a 20, 24 uh, threads. So it's a very, very powerful chip. We'll be able to provide the full electronics of an autonomous car in a 2025 uh, time frame, way below $1,000. Not the chip, the full electronics, the full, uh, the full ACU. And this is you know, propelling us to a 2025 time frame of a consumer, consumer AV, which I think is going to be a very, very exciting uh, milestone. So there are many, many, many more details to talk about, many more things to, uh, to show. I'll do that uh, tomorrow with the Under the Hood uh, session, an hour long Under, under the Hood uh, session. So thank you, and uh, back to you, uh, GB. Thanks, Amnon. Today we gave you just a glimpse of the advancements we're delivering from the client to the edge. And we'll continue to harness the superpowers and drive this accelerated pace of innovation to deliver world-changing technology throughout 2022 and beyond. And now for the final announcement of the day, I'm excited to share that Intel will host our second Intel On event called Intel Vision on May 10th and 11th. Alongside our customers and partners, we'll showcase how companies are leveraging Intel technology to help solve some of the world's most pressing business challenges. We can't wait to see you there. And with that, thank you, stay safe, and let's make 2022 a great one.